today's video, I want to show you an example of a technique called volatility shift line and also explore some of the problems attached to normal pitchforks. Before we begin, let me remind you that the Black Friday promotion is now fully over and prices are back to normal. Okay, if you got the price action trading volume 1 and 2, you might be well aware of the problem of knowing where price will exhaust its reversion. This is one of those major problems that any speculator must deal with on a daily basis. There is no single technique that will tell you 100% of the time where price will land because price is too chaotic and turbulent for that to happen. The general solution to this problem is to observe the various levels that could represent a potential barrier for price and watch, and watch carefully how price reacts when it gets to those barriers. That's a much better approach that lets the market tell you what to do, in a sense. In this chart we can see three black horizontal lines that point to the inward and outward frequencies and the volatility shift line as well. Those are potential barriers for price near the solid major low. The fact that these lines are roughly in the same place is a good thing, but that's not always the case. Let's fast forward a few price bars to see what happens. Here we can see that as soon as price touches the volatility shift line, it shows an explicit reaction from the buyers. It's interesting to notice that there was a minor flow going down with low volatility until price reached the volatility shift line, creating a large hybrid bar that disrupted several minor highs in a minor flow down. This is an obvious example of which of the three lines price will respect, but remember that things are not always this easy. At this point, since we have an apparent exhaustion in the retracement phase near a solid market structure, we can start thinking about an entry point, for example. We can draw a standard pitchfork in the major points of this market. So let's, so let's see what, what that looks like. In this image, you can see that price returns to the lower line of the pitchfork, but it creates a frequency shift as shown by the red pitchfork. This is an important detail to catch because frequency shifts represent a nonlinear adaptation to the ever-changing market dynamic. Pitchforks, like any other tool, can become obsolete very rapidly. And frequency shifts are a way of extending the half-life of the tool for a more precise analysis. Let's, then, let's advance price a bit more to see what happens. Here we can see that the shift in frequency starts to describe price much better than the original black pitchfork line. And if we fast forward a little bit, a little bit more, tuning the red pitchfork in the same way, we'll see that this behavior continues. It's interesting to note that the frequency in the pitchfork is changing, but the angle remains the same for whatever reason. Obviously, this is just one facet of the analysis that can be employed in here, but it serves to show you some of the details that go along with it. The pitchfork is one of the best drawing tools out there, but it, in its original form is still a bit rigid and it lacks this layer of nonlinear adaptability that is so important to have in any market. There are many other aspects of pitchforks that can be incorporated in the analysis, and many other, many other facets of the analysis that must be taken into account for you to create a deeper interpretation of what's going on in the market. If you're interested in learning about these tools, check out the video courses available in the video description. If you like these videos, Please help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, and leaving your comment below. Thank you for watching. Take care.